Rabbeinu David Avudraham asks the following question. He said, where does the term haras olam come from? Hayom haras olam. The answer is it comes from a verse at the end of Jeremiah chapter 20. Yirmiyo Anavi, as you may know, was a prophet who felt that his life was a cursed life. He says and cries, cursed is the day that I was born. And he says, Vatihili imi kivri virachma haras oilam. How I would have wished if my mother's womb was my grave. If her womb was haras oilam, a place where I remained pregnant forever. Asks Davud Ram. That's where the sages got the term haras oilam. But do you see the apparent distortion? In Yirmiya, what does haras mean? Pregnant. In the prayers of Rosh Hashanah, what does haras mean? The birthday. Olam in Yirmiya means olam forever. And in the prayer, they changed haras from pregnancy to birth and olam from forever to the world. I want to address another question. We explore a very unique moment. The Kohen Gadol, the high priest, has just emerged from the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the holiest of holy. The highlight, the apex of the year when the highest priest, the holiest Jew, on the holiest day, would enter into the holiest space. It was a charged moment. It was allowed only once a year. He would go in to do the avoid of the holy service in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, and he came out. And what was the first thing he did when he came out? He would pray a short prayer. And when you look at what he speaks about, he speaks about the needs that define the collective body of the Jewish people. First, he speaks about climate. You need rain. If there's no rain, there's no crop, there's no produce, there's no grain, there is famine and starvation. He also asks for parnasa, livelihood. People need to live. He also asks that the trees of the field should yield their produce. And he finally asks the Jewish people shouldn't lose their independence and sovereignty in Eretz Yisrael, in our eternal homeland. But he adds one more line into this prayer. A year in which no woman should experience a miscarriage. It's a very beautiful and important and noble and loving prayer. But one second, my dear high priest, if we're getting to that level of request, why not ask that people shouldn't fall ill? And those who are ill should experience recovery. And no people should die young. He doesn't mention any of those. Not because they're not important. Because this is a very short prayer and he just gives like a few bullet points of things that affect the nation generally. And this tefillah, according to most, was composed by one of the high priests. Yoisi Kohen Gadol composed this prayer and somehow, according to most, felt that this line has to be there. Why? You see, the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies. But he's not the only one who goes into the Holy of Holies. On a spiritual level, every Jew, Yom Kippur, goes into Kodesh HaKadosh, into the Holy of Holies. And what happens at that moment? Whenever you enter into a space where you can see yourself with more transparency, when you're not entangled by so much trauma, fear, insecurity, when you can see yourself in a deeper way, in a holier way, in a more godly way and divine way, what happens when I emerge from the Holy of Holies? I am pregnant, pregnant with dreams, pregnant with possibilities, pregnant with potential. And at that moment, the high priest says a tefillah. Of course, he davens for the Jewish people. He davens for the land of Israel. But there's one more thing he has to pray for at that fateful moment. Shana! It should be a year that a woman should not experience a miscarriage. Of course, it means on a physical, biological level, children should be born. But there is also a deeper layer of meaning. How many of us are pregnant with potential, with possibility, with idealism, with dreams, with so much opportunity to change ourselves and change the world, and yet what happens? 
Sadly, we experience a miscarriage. The dreams die in utero. They're not actualized. They're not fulfilled. Now you will understand the depth, the nuanced subtlety of our sages when they took the Haras Oilam of Yirmiya and converted it into a Haras Oilam of Rosh Hashanah. And I asked the question, how can they distort the verse? Does Haras mean pregnancy or birth? Does Oila mean forever or the world? Wasn't that precisely their point? Hayoim Haras Oila. And it's up to me, and it's up to you to translate those words. I will choose this Rosh Hashanah to say Haras Oila and translate it as today is the birthday of the world. Today is the day when I will be born, when the world will be born, when all of my inner potentiality, when my inner greatness, exaltedness, loftiness, sublimity, sacredness, my infinite light, the light of the divine that dwells in me in my soul, which is a chelik eloika mimal mamash, a soul that's a fragment of the divine. A year in which my light will be born. It will emerge from utero. It will be actualized. It will light up my world. It will light up my home, my community, my world, the world. The Yeshiva.net